All right, a couple other things that I do want to show you and discuss. When we think about SQL Server, of course, there's the database engine and how it's storing the data. Of course, we have our integration services, which is moving our data from all of those sources into our warehouses and our repositories. But then we look at how do we analyze that data. And when you have large data warehouses and repositories, one of the most important things we can do is build multi-dimensional cubes that give us the ability to do high-speed analysis on very large and complex data sets. SQL Server has had analysis services as a part of it for many versions now, but they do have some significant improvements in the new environment. For one, it has a broader reach and has more different types of data that it can incorporate. And they've created a new concept, which is the tabular data model. Now, for those of you who've been using older versions of SQL Server, particularly 2008 and 2008 R2, you might have had the opportunity to play with Power Pivot a little bit. Power Pivot was a new concept where we wanted to make it so Excel could actually manage extremely large sets of data and do it in an efficient way. That's why they bought the Vertipak engine to provide that compression and provide the tools to make that possible. But it wasn't just about lots of data in Excel, although it does make it possible for it to handle hundreds of millions of records. It was also about creating data models that may or may not exist within the underlying database. Many of us have worked with databases that have been around forever. They are what they are. They may not be able to change. They may have good relationships. They may not have good relationships. And we're stuck with the limitations that that imposes on us. Well, one of the things that Power Pivot introduced in the Excel world is that a user could make a connection to a database, whether it was an analysis services database, an, OL, an OLAP, an OLAP, or a transactional database, production database, an OLTP. You could connect to either one of those, and you could then build a model. So I could pick which tables I wanted. Even if there were no relationships, I could build relationships between them. I could change the way the data types were behaving and the formatting of them. And then once I had my model in place, in Excel, I could build pivot tables and pivot charts off of that newfound data model. This was a wonderful idea, but there was a fundamental flaw in their thinking. The people who know how to build those data models are generally not the people who are the direct Excel users. So it became a disconnect. You could do this wonderful thing, but the people who should be doing it were not the people who had the Excel file who needed to build the connections. So they decided to resolve this issue by abstracting that functionality out and making it a part of SQL Server. So now within the SQL Server world, you have a whole new interface where you're able to create tabular data models. So now you as an administrator of your SQL Server environment can build those models for your users and then they, from their Excel environment, can simply connect to that model and build their pivot tables and build their pivot charts directly without having the need to understand the building of those relationships, the building of those aggregate data points. That can all be handled from central administration level and then made available to your end users. This creates a much better layer for the building of models, because you don't really necessarily want your end users to do it. It's not to say that they can't. They can still use Power Pivot to do it themselves, but they are no longer required to do it themselves. These models can be built from that central place. And this is important because this gives us the ability to take any database, whether it's a standard relational database, whether we're using our unified data model where we're having our cube information directly against our transactional information, whether we're building cubes that are against data warehouses, we can now have an abstract model layer that pulls this information together and makes it available to our end user components like SharePoint and Excel. This is all a part of their world that they call the BI semantic model, business intelligence semantic model, where they wanted to create a single here within your data infrastructure where you handle the modeling 
that is isolated and separate from the data sources, but also isolated and separate from the various UIs that your end users use. So there's a place where you can build in those logic points, those rules, a true data tier to manage the business logic separate from the underlying databases and the outlying user interfaces.